In Creole Parametric, there is a command called Edge Type where you select an edge and it tells you what type of edge it is. I know, really shocking. In this video, I'm going to cover four different topics. First, how to use the Edge Type command. Second, some situations in which it can come in useful. Third, some ramifications of step file export. And fourth, I'm going to go on a tangent about boundary representations and different geometry modeling kernels. All right, so here I am in a part model. If you want to find the command, go to the analysis tab. And then from the geometry report drop down, you can find the edge type command. When you click on it, it will open up a dialog box and you can select an edge. So for example, if I pick on this edge, it will tell me that it is a line. Let me pick another edge over here. Yep, it is a line. And then let me pick this edge over here. Yes, that one indeed is a line. But let me try a another different one. Let me move my model around. I'm going to pick this one over here. This one is actually a spline, so it's not a line. When I was creating the sketch, I created a spline through two points, and by default, you're going to get a straight line, but this is still going to register as the edge type of a spline. Let's take a look at some more examples. In another sketch, I created a parabola and a hyperbola, but when I click on the different entities, they still show up as the type spline. Now let's pick some other different entities. So for example, I will pick this edge and this one is an ellipse. So that is a third type. And when I was creating the sketch, I created an ellipse in which the major and the minor axes were the same. And if I click on this edge over here, you can see that it is the type ellipse, even though it looks like a circle. And on the side of the model, here we have another edge. I will pick on this one. And this one looks like an ellipse, but actually it is a spline. All right, so that's good so far. Let me uh, go to a top view of the model. I will select this surface and then go to the view normal command, which is shift N. And I've got an extrude in the model. It looks a little weird, and that is because, once again, if I go to the edge type command, I'll select this edge. This edge is an arc, so that is a fourth type. And then we have another edge over here, but this one is actually a spline. And if you create a hole in the model, well, that will show up as the type arc. You'll notice that doesn't show up as a circle because, as you have probably noticed in Creo Parametric, the way that cylinders are represented are by two half cylinders, so that's why this is arc instead of a circle. And one other thing to note in the dialog box, you do have a drop-down list where if you want to create a saved analysis, you can, although I'm not sure why you would want to do that. Okay, so let's cancel out of the command. Now let me show you some interesting effects of this or how you might be able to use it. So for example, let's say I'm in my model and I decide that, hey, I want to create an axis in the model and I go and try to pick this edge over here. Well, here's giving me the option to create it tangent to the edge. I actually want it to be through, but I don't get the choice. All right, so that's one issue. Let me cancel out and try a, another different command. Let's say I want to create a sketch in the model and I can pick, say, this flat planar surface or this flat planar surface or, hmm, can't get this face right over here. Can't figure out why that is. Let me hit the cancel button. And another situation, let's say that I have this sketch here in my model and I decide that I want to revolve it. Let's click on the revolve command from the mini toolbar. And I say, hey, I want to revolve about this edge. It is not letting me pick that edge over there. I could pick, say, this edge over here, and it works. Let me remove that edge from the selection. But it's not allowing me to pick this edge. So you could diagnose these different kinds of problems using the edge type command. So let's go once again to the analysis tab and then go to edge type and I pick this edge over here. Yep, that is showing up as a spline over there. If I pick this one, it is showing up as a line. This is showing up as a line. And this one over here as well is showing up as a spline. So because this surface is bounded by two lines and two splines, it's not 
being picked up as a flat planar surface. That's why I couldn't create an axis through that particular edge. I could not use that edge as the axis of revolution for a revolve feature. And I also could not sketch on this surface even though it looks like a flat planar surface. So those are some different potential use cases. Now, one thing that is interesting, let me take a look at this model once again. And I showed you some interesting situations where, uh, again, if I go to the edge type command, if I pick either of these arcs over here, they are showing up as an ellipse. I'm going to go to a model where I exported this as a step file and then imported it into a completely empty model. So if you take a look at this part model over here, I've got an import feature. Now if I go to the edge type command, let me go to geometry report, edge type. If I pick that same edge over here that was a problem in the other model, you'll see that it is showing up as the type line. So even though I created it in the native model as a spline through two points, here in the imported file, it is showing up as a line. Similarly, I created this as an ellipse in the other model. In this part, as an imported entity, it is showing up as an arc. So that's one interesting th thing to note about these different geometry types. If you import it into another part file, using a step file. All right, let's cancel out of here. One thing I forgot to mention, since that edge is being recognized as a line in the imported part, I can use it just like I could use a straight edge. So let's take a look. Let me go to the sketch feature here. I'm going to use the revolve command. And if I try to pick this edge, hey, I'm able to revolve around it. Let me hit the check mark. Similarly, if I want to create a datum axis through that edge, well, I can do that. Here it's giving me the option to go through it. And let me rotate the model. By the way, if you're looking for that axis, let me turn on my axis display and you can see it. And if I want to create a sketch through the surface, well, I can pick on the surface and use the sketch command. And so those are the effects of importing via a step file. And now I want to talk about different types of curves. And to talk about different curves, first I want to talk about geometry kernels. A kernel is the engine that is used in different CAD software in order to make your different models. In other words, in order to make your geometry. And you might not know it, but Creo Parametric uses a proprietary PTC kernel that is called Granite. A very popular one in industry is the Parasolids kernel, which is owned by Siemens. And the Parasolid kernel is used for SOLIDWORKS, NX, and Onshape. SOLIDWORKS and Onshape were created by the same people, so hey, they use that Parasolids kernel. CATIA uses something called CGM, which stands for the Convergence Geometry Modeler. There is another very popular kernel called ACIS. That's used in a lot of the most popular finite element analysis packages. So for example, ANSYS, Abacus, Nastran, they all use the ACES kernel. Another kernel is called Feature Script that is in Onshape that allows people to create their own commands within the software. And also there is the Open Cascade kernel, which is an open source kernel for creating boundary representations. A boundary representation is a way of representing geometry in 3D. And you define solids by the surfaces that enclose them. In other words, by the boundaries of that surface. And a boundary representation contains two main different kinds of entities. You have geometry, like volumes, areas, lengths, and points. And this defines the position, size, curvature, other different properties of your geometric entities, but you also have topology, which is stuff like bodies, faces, edges, and vertices, which define the connectivity, associativity, and links between the different geometry that you have in a model. 
And so Creo is a CAD modeler that uses boundary representations. And you can see these used a lot, especially in freestyle features and also in topology optimization and generative design. But be aware that Creo also uses other different geometry tools, especially when you take a look at additive manufacturing in lattices. Like, you know, there's the voxel type of lattice, which is actually a different kind of geometry. And another kind of geometry that you have, another way of representing 3D models, is something called constructive solid geometry. And actually, the first two CAD packages that I used in industry were of the CSG type. I started out on Ideas and Katia V3, which were pure CSG kind of software tools. And the way that constructive solid geometry works is you start off with primitives. So for example, you could have a block or a cylinder or a cone or a torus. And then you do Boolean operations between those different primitives in order to create your end result. So for example, you could add two primitives to one another. You could subtract a primitive from one another, or you could find the union between two different primitives. And so that's just something about boundary representations. And when I was going through that edge type command, I initially thought, hey, maybe the different choices that you have for the types of edges correspond to the different kinds of 2D and 3D curves in the boundary representation type of definitions, but that's not the case. There are actually nine different kinds of 2D and 3D curves in the boundary representation paradigm. And when you take a look at the edge type in Creo Parametric, only four of the different choices are available. You have lines, ellipses, splines, but instead of circles, you have arcs. Now, one thing in the demonstration, I pointed out that I had a feature that I created using a parabola and a hyperbola. Well, those just showed up as splines in the edge type in Creo Parametric. So there you have it, some information about edge types in Creo.